Hi, welcome to Parametric House. In this video, I want to show you how uh, you can design a parametric visualization uh, of a slider, as you can see here. Uh, I can change the location of the slider by using the Rhino interface. And as you can see here, I can change the uh, domain start, domain end. I can flip the domain. For example, this is going to be 149. This one is going to be 9. Uh, I can flip the curve if I want to bring it inside and just hit the flip direction. It can go inside there. Just use these flips to uh, correct that. Uh, as you can see here, we can use this sub curve to actually convert a circle into this sub curve and extract the data. Uh, again, I can give some thickness to this visualization, I can change the number of divisions, the length we have here, the gap. Uh, we can work with the text, flip it inside if we wanted to show it here, flip the direction. And also you can flip it. You just have to play with these flipping things to bring it right. As you can see here, this false is going to make it like that and true is going to make it horizontal. Again, you just have to play with this true false to make it right. Uh, remember that you can always flip the domain if you want to just change the location and this is going to be the start and the end of the domain. Uh, the next thing is the number of digits you want to show. So you can see if I increase that, the digits is going to increase. Zero is going to just make you integers. Uh, you can also reset the Kangaroo simulation. We're going to use this grab component to grab this point and change the location. Uh, this range is going to be the range of uh, distance you can grab this point. So increase it if it's not related to your project or decrease it. So you can see that I can always have control over it. Uh, the output is going to be completely controllable. You can see that we have the curve, which is going to be the curve inside here. Uh, you can have the domain, which is actually the domain we are using. Uh, the surface obviously is going to be the surface you will have here. We'll go to the shaded mode. You can see that we have the surface. Uh, we can also have the curve one which is going to be this curve and curve two, which is inside that. Uh, remember that you have to install the Pufferfish plugin. I'm going to explain this step by step. Uh, let me also turn on uh, shoot here. Okay, uh, the lines, which is obviously going to be these lines if you want to use them in your project. Uh, I have used the human uh, plugin to give it a line uh, preview line weight. You can find it here. Human plugin display custom preview line weight. You can see that I can just also give that thickness and a color also if I want to. Uh, we have the planes, which is really useful if you want to see the planes. Uh, let me uh, make the preview plane size a little bit bigger, maybe 30. And you can see that we have the planes here. And we can also have the values, which is going to be obviously the division number here. So if I decrease that to maybe like four, you can see that this is going to be the division. Remember that flipping the domain is also going to flip this so you can access the values. Uh, another thing that I have added to this example file is that you can uh, visualize the text here. Uh, again, you can define a point which is going to be the solver point. That's not the case. The only thing you can control here is the point you want to the location of the text. And that this text is going to be exactly this, uh, the location of this point, okay? Uh, again, you can flip the text if you want to. Just play with the flips. I'm going to explain why we're going to use that. Uh, again, if you want to define the digits, and here I've just used the display tag 3D to give it some thickness. 
and you can also change the color uh, the justification is also important for example it's just like top left of the plane middle center so you can also control that and just a simple twist to show you that we can twist this box using this slider uh, the most important feature about uh, this example file is that you can also give it a freeform curve. So, for example, if I just uh, delete the circle and go to Rhino, maybe we just draw a curve here. And the most important thing is that you can also change the plane. So, if I plane, change the plane to this one. A little bit bigger and set it to this curve again that we can change the sub uh, curve so that you can pick a part of that if you want to uh, the domain start and end again we have to just flip the direction to put it right if you want to put it here you can do that too and I think that I have to delete one of these control points make it like that Uh, flip the direction, flip the curve if you want to, and then we just have to play with the flip text. So maybe you just flip that in the right direction. Again, you can see it's from 0 to 180. If I want to flip the domain, I can just make it from 0 to 180 here. Uh, another thing that I can control is the number of divisions. And remember that just hide this or right click and internalize so you don't get messed up with the curve and now you can just play with this point if you wanted to reset it just simply go to the kangaroo and reset the goals and now you can just play with this that's it uh, now you can change also the location uh, of the text that we want to show Another thing that I have made here is that you can use two text tags and I've just projected that. The reason is that uh, if we want to put the text uh, on the plane of the curve, you can see by even changing this point, it's always going to be in the plane. And there's a degrees that you can rotate the th text to make it right. Okay, and just flip it two times to make it right. You can see it here. Or if you want to just put it on the point, turn this one off and turn this on, and it's going to snap to the point. Maybe you just want to put it somewhere else. So this one is going to be uh, uh, snapped to the point, and this one is going to be uh, snapped to the uh, projection plane. It's really useful if you want to use it in your projects. Uh, that's all of the example file, but let me just show you step by step what's happening uh, in the cluster for those who want to learn grasshopper uh, if you double click the cluster you can see that I have made it step by step and I'm going to explain it so for those who want to learn it um, learn more about the components and how grasshopper works just simply watch the video till the end and uh, remember that you can download this from our website at ghfile.com okay let's get started and uh, take a look at the steps I've taken to produce the final results. Okay, let me just turn off everything and explain about the cluster. We can just double click the cluster and turn off everything so we can do that step by step. The first step is to uh, extract the sub curve. So whatever curve we have, for example, this one is circle. I've used the construct domain from the uh, math construct domain to pick up a part of it. Uh, then for the curve, uh, the first step is to offset this curve. I've used the Puff, uh, Fish plugin, a uh, curve and offset curve component. You can find it here. And obviously we just have to give this the curve we want to offset. The plane is going to be the same plane. So I've used it for both of them. Uh, the di uh, di uh, distance is going to be two distances because we want to make it like that you can change that if you want to and then simply use a boundary surface to produce the boundary surface uh, you can also uh, let me just turn this on explode the first curve as you can see here the outer curve and pick up with the list item two parts this is going to be the first one 
The reason I've used the Pufferfish plugin is that with the T input, I've used the curvature. And what's going to happen is that, assume that this is going to be the offset. It's going to, when we explode it, it's going to give you four parts. So this is going to be one, two, three, and four, okay? So this is one, two. Okay, now what we want to do is to use these two curves for our project. So uh, as you can see here, I've picked two list items, this one and this one. And a good technique you can always use is to use the set list weave command. Uh, in the weave command, you just have to give a true false. You can see that we have used the flip true false uh, input. And because the uh, input 0 and 1, if you give it a true, a false is going to be give it a 0. It's going to give uh, the first curve as an output. And if you give it a false, the second one is going to go as an output. Okay, so that is a good technique. You can always use the weave and give a toggle to the pattern input and it's going to help you to get the outputs. Then we, uh, we can use the perpendicular frame to just extract a series of perpendicular frames from the curve perpendicular frame component and uh, the number of divisions we defined. Okay, that is going to be the first part. Uh, the next part is going to be here. We're going to play with the plane. So as you can see here, we just have to deconstruct the plane from vector plane deconstruct. Uh, we have the center x, y, and z. We also have to find, uh, let me show you with a vector display. It's going to help you to understand this. Just give this 10x, so it's going to be bigger and you can understand. We also need the tangent output. And the reason we need that is to, de uh, to construct the planes. So uh, we're going to use the curve evaluate curve tool to extract the tangents and also the perpendicular frame which we have deconstructed here. So if you want to make the lines, uh, which is going to be obviously in this direction, the start is going to be the center of the plane. The direction is going to be somehow two ways. Maybe it's x, maybe it's minus x. So I have made again a weave component. Maybe it's x, maybe it's the reverse of x. And then we can just flip it by a switch. And the length is going to obviously be controllable here. Uh, we also need a gap. So I've used the extend curve here to extend the curve and just use that as the end point to construct the planes. Okay, so that is going to help you to construct the planes here. Uh, for the plane, the center is going to be the end of the extend curve, which I've explained here. Uh, the x direction is going to be obviously the length, because if this is the line, this is also going to be the x direction of the plane. And for the y, we have to use the tangent. You can see that I have used the tangent for the y. That's going to be a plane. And simply you can use the vector plane flip uh, plane component, which is really great, to flip it in x, y, and uh, uh, at the s is going to be the swap the x, y, and uh, x and y axis directions. Okay, So that is going to be connected to the three flip text uh, components, and we can just play with this plane. So so you can just use this flip plane to play around with the planes if you want to produce any kind of text there. Okay, uh, let's turn off this one. And another part is the digits. Uh, when we divide the domain, which was controllable here, we wanted to flip it or not, whatever, uh, we have to divide it by n. So that is going to be the domain we have here. Uh, then we just want to, for example, extract a digits. Uh, you can use different methods, but for this one, I've used this technique. Uh, I've used this function, which you can find from math and evaluate thing. Double click this. Use the floor, which is actually going to give you this number and the rest is going to be left out. So if I just connect it to evaluate output, you can see that we have 
the floor. Uh, then we want to just uh, find the subtraction between this number and the floor, which is obviously going to be the decimals here. And now what we want is a text fragment. You can find it from set text fragment. The start is going to be zero. And then we can just say how many digits we need. For example, if I say uh, three digits, it's going to be uh, zero, one. This two is going to be added up and then five. So we need five. That's why we have added an X uh, plus two here. You can see it here to just go out from these two digits. And as you can see here, we can have them here. If I increase it, that's a zero digit increase. But that's why we don't have any digits. And then just add this to the floor and we will have the final results. That's it. So that's the technique you can use to produce digits. Uh, another thing is to flip the direction of the domain, which is really easy. We have a domain, we have two numbers, we make two construct domains, and then we use the weave to, with a true and false toggle, flip between these two different domains. Uh, you can also use this list uh, reverse list if you want to and then just give it to the zero that's going to also help you so remember that you can do many uh, things many ways in grasshopper another thing that we need here is to uh, the point we are having here has to have a goal in kangaroo uh, in the kangaroo plugin you can find it from goals on curve and what we want to do is to give it a really high strength and say that when we want to move this point on the curve, because if you accidentally put this uh, point outside the curve, it's going to bring it back on the curve. That's the real uh, reason we're using a kangaroo plugin to just bring it back. So with that, we have to give that as an output too, and that's it. So I'm going to return to the uh, parent, and we have all this. So the goals is going to go to the goal object. We have to use the main grab components added here. Uh, unfortunately, I couldn't add this to the cluster. If I if I could, it, it was really easy. You just have to connect the goals to the goals. It, even you can't put the solver inside the cluster because it's going to break the algorithm. So that's why I just bring that out. And then you can extract the vertices, the updated vertices, which is on the curve and use it for the second part. Just uh, reset that and you can see that we can play with Okay, uh, now that we have the first part, which is all the outputs I've explained, you can also use the second one. Uh, we, uh, let me just turn on the curve here. We uh, project the point on the curve using the curve closest point and then find it the T and then use the remap numbers to say if this is from zero to one, and we have a target domain, which is the location of here. So when it's from zero to one and assume that the domain is uh, from 10 to 90 and the red one, the T is equal to, for example, 0 0.3, it's going to uh, uh, automatically convert that into the location of this domain. So it's going to be maybe 40 maybe and that remap number is going to be helpful so you can find it from uh, math domain and remap numbers uh, by default the source domain is 0 to 1 so you don't have to change that but be sure to reparameterize the curve so it's between 0 and 1 that's it and then we just have the number here uh, again we use that technique to uh, pick up the digits and then give it as an output uh, we can also have the point as an output, so let's just turn this off. And then to extract the plane uh, of the text, we can just have the curve, uh, extract the plane, and use the point to move it in another location if we want to. And then rotate the plane, maybe we just want to rotate the location of the plane, rotate plane, you can find it from a vector plane, rotate plane. It's going to actually, if we have this plane, it's going to rotate it around the z-axis, which is really helpful. And then we just flip the plane and get the output. 
and then we can use those outputs to uh, produce the final results. The point is going to be used to show it with the dot display, the color, uh, the size, go to the rendered mode. The most important thing is the value we need here and I'm going to use that value for the twist. So that's it. That's how we can make the component and get the final results. Okay, I hope that this tutorial was useful. Uh, remember to like this video so it can reach more people. Subscribe to our channel and let me know what you think about this tool I've developed in Grasshopper, the example file. We can download it from our website. And thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.